Hello, welcome to the Run Testers. I'm Nick. I'm Kieran. And this is our guide to the best carbon plate running shoes in the world, I guess it's fair to say. On the planet. <laughs> um, in this video, we're going to go through kind of all, well, not all, but all the ones we've tested, all the big carbon plate shoes out there. And it must be carbon. That's so one of our rules about this. So it doesn't matter how good the endorphin speed is, it's not going in, it's nylon. Um, and what we're going to do is we're probably going to run through the big flagship shoes from each brand. Yep. Like if brands got a few carbon shoes, one's a training shoe, we, we'll cover that briefly, but really we're looking at the top racers here. Yes. So yeah, might as well dive on in. Let's get going. Carbon shoes time. Let's crack in. Might as well start with the most popular one of all. This is the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent. This is the two. Um, won't spend too long on this. Everyone knows about this shoe, right, Kieran? It's yeah, it's an old <laughs> one. It's the one that kind of started it all, the second generation of the shoe that pretty much started this all. And it's just a fantastic marathon shoe, in my opinion. I love the way that it, it runs. I think it kind of makes you feel fast the moment you put it on. It's got a nice kind of comfortable upper. And it's one of them, for me personally, that's got that right balance of how it feels on the foot and that kind of punchy response. I don't quite get on with the Alpha Fly. I feel like it's slightly strange on my foot. I like the kind of lightweight, minimal kind of punch that you get with this in a carbon shoe for me this is the one that i would still choose to race in this is a great shoe i, I, I agree with all that and i think it's probably one of the most versatile carbon shoes like a lot of them end up tilting more towards marathon or more towards short distance this really will just do it all and do it all very very well it's really light it's got a big high stack it's got that piba foam which i think actually the foam is pretty much as important as the plate when you look across these carbon shoes Essentially, there's nothing wrong with it. I always say when we review a new carbon shoe, oh, really great shoe, but if you've already bought the Vaporfly, there's probably no real reason to get a new one. I'd agree. Next up, uh, the big dog from Adidas. This is the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, uh, a shoe that we haven't got review up on the channel yet, but we, Kieran, you've been beavering away testing this. Yeah, and I'm gonna call it the Adios Pro 2 because I cannot say all those <laughs> names and get them right. I have, I've put this through a marathon test. I haven't raced in it. I just went out and ran 26.2 on my own. I obviously tested the, the original Adios Pro and this shoe runs very, very similar to it. Okay. I think it's it's essentially kind of, although there's some changes, you know, you've had sort of got this cutout in the midsole foam. You've got a sort of slightly lighter weight kind of cellar mesh upper. You've still got the same Light Strike Pro foam. You've still got that same split plate that goes sort of under each of the metatarsals, so sitting yeah. underneath your toes. So you're getting that kind of same kind of ride there's still sort of the same sort of uh, speed roll kind of rocker geometry sort of thing going on here. That's Socrates. That's Socrates. But you know what I mean? You've got that kind of, you've got that kind of roll of rocking yeah, yeah. kind of geometry going on. Overall, I, I think this shoe still feels like a really, really good, and I want to say like a democratic shoe. It's, again, it feels to me like a good versatile. You can race in this. You can also train in this, I think. Okay. And I found it pretty good when I was moving at a sort of slower pace and a faster pace. So... I've always said with the Adios Pro, and the two is no different, that when you're hanging out your ass later into a marathon, if your form sort of fades a little bit, I think this shoe does help you with that. It will soak it up and keep you to sort of some level of efficiency, even when you're not running at your fastest and your best. Um, so I only tested the first Adios Pro, and for me that felt like definitely sort of tilted more towards the cruiser end, the marathon end, than the kind of 5K racing end. Um, is that still kind of what you think about with the two? I, I would say so, yeah. I think this is this is a good kind of marathon distance ratio. I go sort of half marathon as well for, for some people, but I think, yeah, if you're looking to do sort of faster 5Ks, you're going to want something that's probably, I think, a little bit lighter for sure, a little bit kind of, I don't know, a little bit more pop. I think one question we'll get, can you, can you race a really good marathon in this? Yes. <laughs> can you do your training for a marathon in this? Yes, your faster stuff. How does it compare to the Vaporfly 2? I think I would still pick the Vaporfly 2 overall, but I think this is a really, really kind of top shoe. When you're talking about 180 pounds mm. uh, in terms of value for money, I think this has got a lot to, to say for itself. All right, next up we've got the Asics Metaspeed Sky. This is a, this is a lovely box, fresh mm. pair, but much cleaner and lesser ravaged than the pairs we've been running Mine don't look like this. <laughs> um, this shoe, done a lot of miles this year. I think we're both quite big fans of Fairstay, Tom. Oh yes, big time. I think this is, um, of all of the complex shoes that have come out over the past year or so, I think this is the one that's really, not necessarily surprised me, but I, I've been really impressed with, and I wasn't expecting to be quite so impressed with it. It's, it's definitely getting there with the vapor flies and the alpha flies of this world and it's just a fantastic enjoyable shooter isn't it definitely yeah. and even though it's got a slightly lower stack than like the really big boys the you know 40 millimeters it doesn't feel like it feels like a high stack super shoe to me and again i'm talking about foams again i think it's because adidas has developed this ff turbo it's like a nylon based foam similar to piva i don't know exactly what the terminology would be but it feels very similar underfoot and that's really i think what makes a super shoe a lot of the time is how good the foam is and this has got a very nice spring to it it's not overbearing but it is very fast and i think this is as versatile as the vapor fly yeah more 
more versatile than the Alpha. I think this is a good 5K, 10K shoe, and it's got the comfort for those longer distances. Done a lot of long marathon training workouts, taking it up to near 30K, and it's I've never had any kind of leg, you know, any concerns about the protection it was offering. Same time, I've got my 10K PB in the shoe, mm. and I've done like very fast sessions as well. Yeah, it definitely feels for me like all these different carbon plate shoes that we try, some have got a lot of pop in them, yeah. like the Vaporfly, like the Alpha Fly, and this is one of those shoes, and it just feels like you put it on, you want to go faster. You, it feels like it's bouncing you forward, but it also feels, it's not necessarily the lightest shoe out there, but it does feel really light when you're wearing them. It's just a, a really nice shoe for going fast in. Definitely, yeah. I mean, it is, yeah, it's, it's nice and light. And I actually, this is an interesting little tip about the shoe. My friend is a pro triathlete. She's a huge fan of the shoe, a little bit easier at transitions. I think one of the reasons when you look at a lot of triathlon races, Ironman races, a lot of athletes going for um, the ASICs over the Nikes, I think, because this is just a bit easier to get into fast and um, the performance is there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's reasonably pricey, it's £225. Uh, I think that's fair enough. If that's dead level with the Vaporfly 2 these days, that's a really reasonably tricky choice I think for a lot of people yeah, yeah, I yeah. think I probably still edge the Vaporfly just because it's so proven with so many runners yeah but I don't I, need... I think there's an element of comfort as, as well though yeah. it just uh, with a lot of complex shoes there's an, there's an element of comfort in that some of them have quite a light section at the top here yeah. this doesn't this feels like a very comfy more conventional conventionally designed shoe at the top so it's a very comfortable shoe to wear but you're getting a similar experience in the race or in the run that you would with a Vaporfly. Definitely. Yeah. ASIC's really knocked out of the park with this one, I think, because it's their first proper carbon race. Last year, they had the um, ASIC's Meta Racer, which had a, just a four-foot plate and a pretty um, pretty okay foam, but that was really a shoe I can find to short short runs. It, just, mm. it didn't have all that much pop. It was you know, it was a good shoe. You could do a fast 5K in it, but it wasn't all that fantastic. Mm. The Magic Speed came out this year. We've not run it. Mike has run it. He likes it a fair bit as a kind of trainery racer vibe. Check out our review of that. And there's also the Metaspeed Edge, which is the partner to this shoe, which is interesting, uh, built for kind of shuffly cadence runners. None of us have been able to test I still shoe. can't understand the difference between these shoes. No, <laughs> yeah. So I would say, of the two, by all accounts, I'm a very shuffly cadence style runner, and I love this shoe. This feels like a real super shoe. I think the Metaspeed Edge, maybe, might not so much. Not that we've tested it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think the Metaspeed Sky within the Asics range is the, probably the bona fide super shoe out there. Fantastic shoe. Uh, next up, we have the New Balance RC Elite 2. I'm going to go ahead and say this is probably my favourite new carbon shoe of the year. I'm not going to be racing in it, but boy, do I love this shoe. Uh, it's really cool. <laughs> it is cool. It's not my favourite. I think the, the biggest thing about the um, RC Elite 2 is that foam. There's a lot of foam in it. It's so soft as well. It's like yeah. you're pressing there. It is like a marshmallow. Yeah. <laughs> um, I And I love soft shoes. I love cushion shoes. But when I, I, mean, I ran this half marathon with Nick in this shoe, yeah. um, it wasn't my best half marathon <laughs> of all time. I pulled a, a calf muscle, muscle while I was running in it. But what I did find with the shoe is it, it really, it's really comfy. It really deadens that impact when you're running in it. It's protecting your legs. But for me, it just didn't feel like it had the pop that I wanted mm. from what I'd get from a Vaporfly or, or the Alpha Fly. So I, I really love this shoe. I think it's really comfortable. I think it's really nice to wear. It's just, it may be too soft for some people. Yeah. What, which half marathon was that? I can't oh, remember. Oh, that, here we go. I can't remember. Well, it sounded like a good race. Good, good winner of that race. I can't even remember who won it. I can't remember who won it. <laughs> I won it, and I won it in this shoe. <laughs> and I think it's, um, I think it's a shoe that's susceptibly quick because I used it for a lot of training at first. And this was like a normal, really comfy, soft shoe. But you do kick up the pace. It's got it. There is, mm. there is enough kickback there. It doesn't necessarily feel like you're running. Far. I never felt so disconnected from the ground. I took it to the track and I was running like, like, like 65, 70 second reps. And I was going like, okay, I'm running like four minute Ks here. I was going, no, this doesn't, doesn't feel right at all. And you look at your watch, yeah. you go, Jesus, that's quick um, for what it feels like. And I think that's why it'd be a really lovely marathon shoe. It's really comfortable. And I also think it's, and this is ridiculous for a 210 pound shoe, it's the best trainer racer in the world. Uh, I think I've done loads of training this year. I keep using it for all my long runs. I've done 22 miler in it, 24 miler in it. Got a 15 miler in it this weekend, all marathon training runs. I love using it for that. Yeah. Um, I think it is probably the most comfortable and friendly carbon shoe. Yeah, but although New Balance do have the Fuel Cell TC. So you yeah. love the TC. And that's I love another the TC great more than this shoe, actually. And that's mm. more designed for training and you can even use it for racing. But it's very similar shoe to this. It just feels a little bit more hard wearing for me, a little bit less soft as well. Yeah, maybe. I, I think this actually for me displaces the TC because it's only 40 pounds more, which is you know it's a fair amount, but this is a lot better for actual racing. It's a lot lighter than the TC whilst being similarly comfortable. Like you say, it's, it's a crazy amount of stack and some mm. people won't get on with that and it is very soft, but if you're all into really soft cushion cruiser, lining up a marathon, you want to do well, but you are worried about your legs. The purple, little purple genie might be the one to go for. Lovely, comfortable upper as well. There's, the support yeah. around here is fantastic. It doesn't have any impact on sort of making it a heavy shoe. Yeah, I just hope they make all the other colorways sparkle like this one. Be ashamed oh, if they did. What is on about the colorways? <laughs> 
All right, next up we have got the Nike Alpha Fly, the most expensive carbon shoe in the business. You know, an absolute, it's a monster. It's a monster of a shoe, it's fair to say. Um, Tom, what do, you, what do you think about the Alpha Fly? So I'm a big fan of the Alpha Fly. I've not used it as much as the Vapor Fly. The Vapor Fly is my favorite ever carbon plate shoe, but the Alpha Fly, I, I've, I've had it for about a year now and I've only used it for maybe two races and a few training runs. It definitely feels different than the Vaporfly. It feels mm. like there's a lot more to the, mainly at the bottom of the shoe. It feels a lot wider. Yeah. It feels like you're hitting the ground a lot more. It's almost like you can feel your feet slapping against the ground <laughs> when you're running it. I don't, I don't think that's a major issue. It's just what I noticed after running the Vaporfly for a few races. But I do think it's a great shoe and I'm actually thinking about using this for London in a couple uh, of weeks okay. just because I want to see what it's like over the marathon distance. Yeah, it's a very loud shoe and it's certainly more of a noticeable shoe on the foot. This is my favourite marathon racer. I've used it to run my sub 230 over this year. I'm using it at London again. I find basically with this compared to Vaporfly, I think there's very, very close level performance, I will say that. Uh, this just basically lo helps me lock into a pace and stay there. And then when I got to the end of my marathon, last three miles, absolutely falling over. I worried this is going to be too much shoe, but actually, no, it really helped. I was just kind of, I'm just going to keep going. The pace is the same as it's always been. The shoe basically won't let you slow down at this stage. What I will say, conversely, if you're then trying to kick at the end of a marathon, it's not going to help you very much. I think right. it's a bit too much. I would, you know, that. So I tried a half marathon in the Vaporfly and the Alpha last month for that reason. I think, oh, maybe I'll have more of a kick in the Vaporfly. And I didn't. I, I'm just not an athlete with a kick, it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I actually still prefer this probably for half marathon as well. Yeah. Um, other than that, I think if you're going shorter than that, it's probably a bit too much shoe. It's still very quick. You could run at fast 5K in the shoe. I, the 10Ks yeah. that I run in it were spot on with the time I was getting in yeah. the Vaporflies. Uh, it just didn't feel as enjoyable in those races. But I put it down as my second favourite, probably. Yeah, it's, it's exactly, exactly the same. I, I just think if you're going around a load of corners at 5K pace, it's just, it's just a bit too much. You don't need it. Um, but yeah, certainly a really, really good marathon racer bit different, bit loud, a uh, bit ugly, and I think that will put off some runners, um, but that's fair enough. The other thing is obviously it's so expensive. Um, it's 260 or 70 even now. Yes. So I think if you are concerned about money, the Vaporfly is 225 now. We actually used to be 210, the Vaporfly 2. I'd probably, that, yeah. yeah, if you do want to save that money, yeah, do. It's a lot of money for that, the, the a negligible improvement, I think. Exactly, year. yeah. That said, I am probably going to buy another pair of these because yeah, this is starting yeah. to crack a bit and <laughs> I like it that much. All right, next up we have the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2. Uh, this is not the Endorphin Pro Plus, just released. That's basically this shoe with a lighter upper to bring the shoe under 200 grams. But in terms of the underfoot ride, the performance is probably going to be fairly similar. What do you think of that performance, Kieran? I really enjoyed this shoe. I think it's, you know, again, it's like, it runs a little bit to me like a more traditional kind of running shoe, which is something I quite like. It doesn't yeah. have, when you first put it on, you don't get the feeling like you might get with a Vaporfly or an Alpha Fly that you're running in a very different carbon shoe, you know. Yeah. Um, and for that reason, I, I really enjoyed it. You know, I, I like actually the fact that you've got a more traditional upper as well. Some of the okay. carbon shoes have that. Knit. It's like, yeah, it's like a bit, this has got sort of, some other shoes have that kind of plasticky sort of feel which can okay. compress. Um, overall, I'd, I'd found this to be a sort of really interesting shoe. I, again, I wouldn't choose it to be my top carbon race shoe. Yeah. I do think that I might do a bit more training in this shoe though. Yeah, I think it holds up quite well to a lot of training. I found with this shoe, basically, if I'm running well, I'm fit, I'm not tired, I'm fresh, I really like the way running in this shoe feels. It feels like you're just kind of kissing the ground. You yeah. get that really speed roll rocker. You're not getting, like you say, a big squish, but it's very, it feels very efficient. And I've done up to kind of 15 miles at marathon pace during training cycles, and they've gone really well in this shoe, and I've liked it a lot. But if you're off it, and I did a half marathon in the shoe when I hadn't been able to train much because of various traveling and that, first five miles felt like a god, like kissing the ground, beautiful, wasn't really going all out, but by the end I was struggling, I wasn't in shape, and the shoe felt really horrible then, because it's, it's yeah. quite firm. If you are starting to drop off it, um, I start to get some pain under the forefoot, and it just felt a bit harsh, but that really was, I think, a demonstration of my fitness more than the shoe itself. When you're on it, it helps, but if you're not on it, it doesn't, and some of those common shoes do, I think. And, and also, <laughs> I guess this, this is where maybe you and I sort of differ a little bit. I definitely like a firmer shoe, yeah. I constantly say it, and I think if you're in that bracket where you don't mind not having quite a sort of that sort yeah. of soft squishing response, this is something that might appeal to you. Um, I also sort of, one thing that I think is really interesting when you compare the way that the, the, the kind of heel construction is compared to other shoes and even the tongue, there's definitely a little bit more padding here. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit over, more overall comfort that you might get with some carbon shoes which go super minimal in terms of these other bits to kind of save weight and that's a I think that's an interesting thing over longer distances yeah I quite like I prefer, I prefer the comfort myself I suppose that's maybe where this Endorphin Pro Plus comes in you can maybe if you want if you go oh that's annoying that's like five grams there the Endorphin Pro Plus yeah. if you can get it it's limited edition is out there for that and on pricing for these so you're looking at 190 pounds yeah. 200 dollars so a little bit more expensive than the Adios Pro and the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite, but not yeah. much, still under 200 pounds. Yeah, coming under 200. I think it probably in this slightly different category of carbon racer, the more kind of firm rocked ride, I think they're probably my favorite shoe in this category. We've got one like the Orange Cloudy Mecca we can talk about. So that makes it, you know, a standout pick on that front maybe. 
Can we talk about the Speed 2 though? Because there's one, one thing I want to say. Would you would you buy this over the Speed 2 or would you just get a Speed 2? Um, so I'd buy the Endorphin Speed because I'll be racing something else, but you also can race Endorphin Speed. And I think over a marathon, the slight extra softness of that shoe might help. So I know we're not meant to talk about Endorphin Speed, but <laughs> it's the best shoe out there. I probably, it's probably would be buying it. And I think you don't need to get both of them, but this is a little bit quicker, I think. Yeah. And on 5K, I'd certainly be wanting to wear this over the Speed. So next up, Nick, we've got a shoe that you've run in that I haven't. This is the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite. How does this compare from, I guess, Puma back in the game, really? Yeah. <laughs> How does it compare to the shoes that we've spoken about so far? This is, uh, yeah, Puma's top you know, flagship racer. There is another carbon plate shoe in the lineup, which is Deviate Nitro, which you've tried, the Heel Chopper. Um, this <laughs> yeah. is a big step up on that in that it's got a nitrogen-infused Piba foam in the midsole. It's a Nitro Elite version of the foam, uh, which means that whereas the uh, DV8 Nitro has an EVA, nitrogen-infused EVA, it's still a good foam, but this is much lighter, much poppier. This shoe comes in basically 200 grams for my UK size nine. It's got, it says a 36 mil stack. To me, it seems and rides a bit lower than that, which does give it a bit more stability and it feels a bit more traditional in a sense, but you are still getting a little bit of that squish and pop. Um, it's a shoe that basically I found really surprising. I thought, oh, this is a bit firmer. I think it's a shoe I'm going to really love racing a 5K and I have run like a sub-16 5K in it. Very pleased with myself about that kind of thing. Um, and then, um, but what I actually found, I used it for loads of running over the space of four days of marathon training. And every time I'd start a session, again, my legs are quite tired. I'm wondering if the shoe's going to be enough, like rattling through like, you know, 10 times 1K reps. And actually it always did have enough protection and I found holding the pace easily enough, even on tired legs. I do think there's a bit of that kind of super suit magic in there. It's going to help you at the end of those long events. Like obviously, it's the shoe that Molly Seidel wore for Olympic bronze. Well, big Molly Seidel fan here, so um, I want to be Molly Seidel, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for most people, probably we can't be Molly Seidel. I wouldn't necessarily take it to marathon myself. I'd probably prefer to have something a bit higher and squishier, okay. but it's a great uh, shorter distance racing shoe. What price on this one? This is quite a bit of a bargain. It's only 170 um, however, it is never in stock anywhere, yeah. but if you can find it, especially in the rainbow colorway that um, Puma's doing at the moment, which is my favorite thing in the world, then it's a great shoe to pick up. And actually, there's often Puma you can use codes and deals. I've seen some people getting it for 120. And we've got to talk about the heel, yeah, because yeah. It's, like, I'm looking at this and it's got a very similar kind of heel construction here to the to D8 Nitro, which made my heels bleed. And I know I'm not the only one. Yeah. How is this? This, I can't see any blood, so it's obviously been all right for you. I thought it was going to be exactly the same, uh, but it's got a slightly tighter racing fit all round, this shoe, and at the end of the long, first first ride I took it, I did 28k odd, and I came back, and I hadn't had any problems, I took my sock off, and there was a little bit of blister forming, like, oh no, maybe it's going to be bad, but actually I used it for 60k over the, in total over like a four day period, and it never got any worse than that, actually this one is fine, I had a little, I did have problems with the DV8 Nitro as well, which is a great training racing carbon shoe, by the yeah. way, if you don't have those heel problems, the DV8 Nitro is a really good shoe, but uh, that would, if I ran for over an hour regularly in that shoe, I'd start to get a bit of irritation. No, not bleeding like you got after like yeah. two miles. This is a little bit better. I'd say you probably, and also because it's a racing shoe, you'll be using it more sparingly, maybe get away with it. Obviously, if it starts at like mile three of the marathon, not another reason maybe to keep it for short races. <laughs> uh, next up, we have the On Cloud Boom Echo, which is the third a carbon plate shoe from uh, On, the Swiss brand. Uh, the previous two we're not a big fan of, the On Cloud Boom, the On Cloud Flash, both too low, both too firm, neither really had the chops for racing, it's fair to say. <laughs> Just a little sad shake of the head. <laughs> the Cloud Boom Echo is a massive step up, do you think? Yeah, it's um, this a wonderful surprise when we got to test this, really, because the previous two that we tested from On weren't very exciting. I don't think any of us really enjoyed running in either mm. of those shoes. Um, and then this came out, and it was it's, it's moving more towards what you expect from a carbon plate shoe for all sorts of distances up to like marathon distance. It feels punchier, you can run a lot faster in it. There's quite a nice level of cushioning in it. It just ticks a lot of boxes and it just shows that On have realized where they need to be going when it comes to these sort of carbon plate shoes. Definitely, I think it's got the higher stack, which you can see allows for a much more pronounced scoop in the carbon plate than the previous shoes, which does give you a little bit more of that propulsive feel. That's really, really what the high stack allows. There's more cushioning as well, and it's more protective. And I think there's a big rocker in there. So even though this is still on cushioning, it's still quite firm. You know, it's a nice different feel to it. It's got a firmer feel. I never found it harsh. I use this in training quite a lot. Did like kind of back-to-back -back 10 mile days. Legs felt fresh, like I was using, you know, a super shoe. Whereas in the previous on shoes, if I went out and did 10 miles the next day, I was, you know, in tatters. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, really nice shoe, really fluid running shoe. It kind of disappears in the foot a fair bit as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, a really strong effort. The problem it's got is it's too expensive. It's 210. I have seen it available for under 200 pounds at times. And in yeah. the US, it's, I think, the same price as the Alpha Fly. It's like $270. Yeah. It doesn't compete with those shoes in that level of performance. I don't it's think. tricky, isn't it? I think you, it would be a good shoe if it came in at maybe 50 pounds less. Mm. And then you'd probably start thinking about it as an option for race day. But at that price, it's up against such great competition. You, you just can't argue that. And again, we're just talking about foams here. The on foam is nice. It's a different feel, but it's not 
the kind of high class Piva phone, you're getting a lot of shoes. Yeah. So it could end up being quite, I think it's going to be reasonably durable. It could end up being quite a nice train eraser, but not at that kind of price, I don't think. Which also, I mean, it is non shoe. It's reasonably, I've gone up to half marathon distance very comfortable in the shoe. I think there are people out there who could run a marathon that if you die, that kind of racing flat feel and you're coming to a slightly higher stack and, you know, with a slightly firm feel, but a lot of people, this is going to be too firm for a marathon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think that's one that maybe pitch it more towards the shorter races, knock a bit of the price off, and on I've got a real winner issue. But it is certainly a significant upgrade on past on shoes. If you're all about on, you now have a proper carbon racer to use. It's just if you're not all about on, we'd probably buy something else. Next up, we have the Hocker on a, on a Carbon X2. Uh, Shakira, you're a big fan of the Carbon Original. You're not a big fan of this one. No, I thought the Carbon Original was sort of. Quite nice. It felt sort of like minimal. I, I felt it felt agile on the foot. It wasn't the, the carbon plate wasn't as sort of pronounced uh, as some sort of carbon shoes, and I quite like that. Particularly if you were sort of maybe looking to go into an ultra distance, or you wanted a shoe again that you could train in, mm. but get a little bit of extra efficiency during your training. I think the, the original sort of Carbon X was a great shoe for that. This one, it's it's huge to me. I mean, it, it feels like they've made the overall shoe much bigger. It's got this kind of slightly superfluous kind of swallowtail thing going on the back, which I. I just feel so much rubber. Yeah, so much rubber. So it just feels like too much shoe. And I think they, for my preferences, they kind of ruined that sort of slightly paired back feel that you got with the, the original Carbon X. And I don't think that you get much more in terms of the overall ride for that extra shoe. So yeah, I wasn't a big fan of this. I just found it a little bit sloppy and a little bit overkill. Yeah, I, I wasn't. Like, I was fine on the original Carbon X. I never found it an outstanding shoe. I think. Broadly, I'm the same on this. I don't hate it. I don't like it that much. I just, I just think the problem that Hocker has is really that the foams aren't there. They haven't got the super foams. The plate is great, but the foam is fine, basically. I, I found that, I actually found, I took it out some hard workouts and it surprised me at performance. It's a really hard 10 miler in it and I thought, actually, this is performing pretty well. Like, it can run quick. I just, you'd never go like short distance racing. Like I said, it's too big. Yeah. It's not very agile. Um, and I, maybe a long distance race will really suit some people, but I'm a heel striker and this, I'm sure, is meant to aid that. And I still found it quite clunky in transition. So I don't know. It seems like it's a bit overkill. I yeah. For me, the clear best Hocker carbon shoe is the Hocker Rocket X. Let's talk about that shoe. So this is the Hocker Rocket X, um, which is kind of within Hocker's lineup as pitched as kind of the short distance racing shoe. You know, still big old stack, uh, and I found it really comfortable. Did a lot of training in this shoe, and I think it would definitely be a perfectly good marathon shoe. It's lighter than the Carbon X2, it's nimbler, it's cheaper, I think it's faster. I just don't see why you wouldn't get this shoe over the other one. I would completely agree. This <laughs> this actually reminds me a little bit more of the old Carbon X. You know, it's, it's closer to that in terms of all this going on in the back. You don't have any of that sort of weird extension of the tail. I think, you know, you've, you've got, yeah, it looks like a sort of lower stack. I just, you can feel it in the hand, actually. It, this feels more nimble even when you're holding it. Yeah. And it runs much, much better. I would definitely be choosing this over the the other one. Yeah. I, I don't know why there are two in the range, to be honest. And it's but, still got a rocker in there. Yeah. So, you know, and it's got actually a little bit of actual real rubber on the outside for durability. Uh, you know, this is like Mike's favourite 5K and 10K racing shoes. PB at both distances in it. He's a shoe he does lots of training in. He's a big fan. Um, we're all big fans. I say. And also, this is, you know, a lot cheaper than a lot of carbon shoes. Coming around £140. To me, it's really a shoe that's fighting out more with like the endorphin speed as one of the best kind of trainer racers out yeah. there. And I think if you are looking for a value carbon shoe, this is not going to give the performance of a Vaporfly. It's not going to give you that spring and amazing edge of a mate of super foam can buy the plate. It's going to give you a very fast, reliable ride that's reasonably stable, and it's going to do it for a lot less. Yeah, and and crossover between training and racing, which is crucial. If you're only going to buy one carbon shoe and you want something that's going to take you through your marathon training yeah. or through your race training into the race and and you know to the finish line, this. This can do that. And look, it holds up. Look how dirty it is. Look how much I put it through, and it's still, you know, in really good shape. <laughs> right, something a little bit different here. This is a slightly older carbon shoe. We only had access to it recently in the UK. This is a real low stack, just four foot carbon plate. This is the Skechers Go Run Speed Elite Hyper. Too many words in the name. Tom, what do you think of the shoe? Well, uh, so as Skechers, as we've not tried any Skechers until very recently, so. It's all a bit of a surprise when we got these in. Um, I used the, um, what's it called again? Speed Elite. Speed Elite. We're going to call it Speed Elite. Speed Elite, okay. So I've used it for a 10K race um, and some training runs. I like it. I think it's a really nice, um, kind of lightweight, fast shoe. It's, there's, as you just mentioned, it's quite a low shoe as well. So it, I'm not a big fan of low shoes. Um, at 10K distance, I did find it was hurting my cards a little bit. It wasn't really protecting them very much. Um, but I think for short distances, it's a great, light, fast shoe. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think it's a shoe that 
um, I think you've got to be going all out to really appreciate it. Like I've done some like long training sessions in it when I've been running like K reps, so kind of like half marathon pace, something like that. It didn't feel great. Uh, when I got onto like 60 second reps or like shorter reps, really going for it, it felt amazing. It's so light, it's only 180 grams in my UK nine. Pickup's amazing. You're getting a little bit of propulsion from the plate. Feels very much to me like a souped up racing flat basically, mm -hmm. which is what it is really. And yeah. the stack is actually low enough for track races on the World Athletics. It's on the World Athletics list. I kept checking it because I did a 3,000 meter race in the shoe and it felt pretty good for that. Like for track races, if that is a niche you're really into, this is a really good shoe to look at if you don't like to use spikes like I don't. So I'll probably be keep it around in my rotation for things like 3,000, 5,000. Yeah. I don't really do 10,000 on track. It's too many laps. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's a nice shoe. It's something a bit different, but you're not getting that comfort and protection and spring from a lot of carbon shoes. And what is the price on this one? This is 160 pounds, but it's yeah. never that price. You can get it quite cheap. So and that's, that's probably the biggest plus point for this shoe and a lot of the schedule shoes that are out is that you can probably get this significantly cheaper than that and if you get it significantly cheaper it's a great deal for a fast lightweight short distance shoe definitely you're looking for a track workout shoe it's another good option there although even then i did one session where i did swap to a more cushion shoe halfway through just because i wanted to save my legs for the next day it's got the speed but it is a bit harder on the legs Come on to the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. This, in a way, is a bit of a forgotten man in the carbon shoe. In the carbon shoe wars, yeah. um, it's Brooks' kind of second attempt. Their first one, the Hyperion Elite One, wasn't great. It was really firm. Just felt like a racing flat with a load of unnecessary stack. This is a better shoe. This DNA EVA. This is a nitrogen infused EVA foam. It's got a bit of response in there, and this again provides a slightly different carbon offering. I think it's fair to say. Yeah, for me, I think it, again, it sort of ran a little bit more stable. Mm. It was a shoe that might therefore. I think be used across a sort of different range of your sort of racing and training as well. A little bit more, it had a little bit more of a traditional feel again. Definitely. I think I think before some of the other shoes that have come out since that have gone for that sort of trainer racer, yeah. sort of closer sort of traditional kind of match rather than a baseball fly that you might only be putting onto racing or an alpha fly that you're definitely really only going to race in. Yeah, it's a nice, I think, again, I don't think it's got that all that super shoe performance you're getting from shoes with just better foams essentially yeah. for me. Um, it's got a nice high stack. You can do a lot of training in it. Problem is it's coming in over 200 pounds. Yeah. I don't think it's massively outperforming things like the Hocker Rocket X, the Endorphin Speed 2 if you're looking for a trainer racer vibe. So I think that's a problem it has. I'll be interested to see where Brooks goes with this. This foam is quite nice. It's just... These nitrogen infused EVAs are really good foams. There's a few shoes of them and they're really good, but they are not, they're not quite the same level as some of the other stuff you're getting out there, I think. Yeah. Okay, so the next shoe we've got here is a little bit different than the complex shoes we've talked about in the video. It's the North Face Flight Vector Trail Shoe. And as you mentioned there, it's a trail shoe, not a road running shoe. I've used this for quite a lot of training runs now, up until about half marathon distance. But you've done a bit more than me. Uh, you've run an, uh, what, how far was it? It was yeah. a 60, 62K ultra, so 38 miles or so in this very recently. And yeah, I, I have to say, I was really quite impressed with this shoe. I wasn't sure what to expect. There were a couple of key points when I first saw this, put it on, that I was worried about. One was this kind of big heel that came up and scooped around. I felt like that was definitely gonna smash up my Achilles and cut. It looked a bit like a DVA Nitro in that sense. The other thing was that actually, when I put it on, it was quite long. It, it's got a quite sort of weird fit where actually you feel like you've got almost like a thumb width extra in the toe box. And that was a bit of a worry. But actually when I got out there on the run, none of the problems here over 60K, didn't have any hot spots, no rubbing. It kind of had a really nice kind of firm lockdown, good hold, no foot slipping, which is something that's essential in a trail shoe, particularly if you're taking on some descents. I was running kind of rolling trails rather than really big steep kind of descents you might find kind of alpine stuff. But the other thing is that, that carbon plate, you can feel that there is a softness and a response in the shoe that I think was great on those kind of hard compact trails. Yeah, yeah, I think that, that that's the key to this. And when, when the, the, this shoe came out, the big question is, would you need a carbon plate on the trails? And it really depends on what type of trails you're running on with this shoe. I've done a lot of sort of really muddy trail runs in it and the carbon plate is pretty much useless when it comes to that. It doesn't have any benefits whatsoever. And that bottom bit of the shoe, which you're probably about to talk about now, <laughs> yeah. is not well designed for mud. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say, you know, that muddy bit, you've got some really, really, really shallow lugs here. So there's got to be less than sort of two mils, I think, in here, or, you know, just around two mils. So you're not going to get a huge amount of grip if you're going into a, a muddy kind of trail. The one thing I will say that out the UTMB, people running that kind of big, you know, 170Ks, there were people wearing the flight vector at the front, some of the elite athletes, and that coped well on what was kind of yeah. a reasonably sort of damp course during the night. Um, so it can hold up to that kind of thing for some runners. Yeah. The, what, the other thing I will say actually is there's quite a decent amount of stability in this shoe, which I really like. Yeah, you I need that really. in a trail shoe. And I was, one, I was worried about how you would get that with a carbon plate. You do still feel a good amount of ground contact. Although this, the foam here is actually quite soft and responsive as well. It's, you know, you're not gonna get that kind of, it's not like a Vaporfly style kind of carbon shoe ride, no. but compared to other trail shoes, this is a, 
a soft and more punchy run. Yeah, I think I think for me it's a really great shoe when it comes to road to trail. I do a lot of road to trail, and if you're running on the road with this, it does deliver like a fast road shoe. So um, I think for me it works best on those sort of harder trails between road and those trails and it does have a lot of pop in it and it's a, a really fast shoe. Yeah, it's like a better, for me, it's like a better peg trail, Nike peg trail, or, you know, I tested the on Cloud Ultra, another shoe that's designed for sort of going long and it's just got a little bit more forgiving kind of punch than those shoes that ride a bit firmer and I think a really interesting shoe people have said to me would you use this for something like the Marathon de Saab where you're running through the desert and through kind of hard compact ground and I would say actually it'd be really interesting one one more thing about the ultra though it's it's got this kind of booty construction it's quite hard I found with a sort of high foot to get your foot in and out after 60 k's with my bruised and sort of toes and stuff that was a bit of a, a bit tricky I need someone else to get them off my foot. So if you are going to be changing your socks up and stuff, that's one consideration if you're going very long. Shorter trails, fine. Obviously, we haven't done it. We've tested a lot of carbon shoes. I think we've put the work in, but there are people out there very annoyed you haven't tested their favorite carbon shoe. Quick run through what we haven't been able to test. It is out there. There's the Adidas Prime X, which is the illegally high um, 50 millimeter carbon shoe. Very comfy, only for training. Really expensive, illegal. I don't, not a huge fan of people making illegal shoes. Haven't tested that. Sketches have upgraded their carbon shoe line with the Speed Freak, which is a higher stack version of the Speed Elite. Possibly an interesting option. Be keen to get hold of that. Talked about the Meta Speed Edge earlier. Uh, it's a lower stack. It's a kind of, yeah, like I say, compared to the Meta Speed Sky, a bit firmer feel by all accounts. Uh, slightly different option there. Ones I've never even known nothing about are the Scott Ski Cup and the Craft CTM Ultra. There's the 361 Flame. Tom loves 361 shoes. Hasn't been able to get hold of it yet. <laughs> and then there's, the, there's another, uh, there is another carbon shoe in the Adidas lineup, the Adi Zero Pro or something like that, which is again is a firmer, lower stack shoe, not one we've been able to try. Sorry, we'll keep trying, but I think we have covered really the big hitters in this area, it's fair to say. So we've talked a lot about carbon shoes, but really, you know, we've given a lot of, we said a lot of glowing things about lots of shoes, but it comes down to it. This is a, this is the big day. Your race is coming up. What are you using for 5k, 10k, half marathon and marathon and maybe ultra, Kieran, maybe as well, Tom. Uh, what was your top shoes, Tom, you're actually racing? Mine's pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, pretty much Vaporfly, 5k, 10k, half. Marathon, I think I'm going to test out the Alpha Fly yeah. for London. So maybe the Alpha Fly, but at the moment it's the Vapor Fly. Okay. <laughs> um, and then ultra distance, I probably would use them, um, the the Flight Vective okay. um, for ultra. Nice, Kieran. I, I don't race five k. Who races five k? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get out of bed for more. Than <laughs> no, so I think half marathon, I go Vapor Fly too for sure. Yeah. Not quite sold on the Alpha Fly. And then for going into ultra, I think the Vective is for sure an interesting shoe, and I'd be I'd be keen if that's a kind of a slightly sort of flatter compact trails mar uh, the ultra marathon, then I would go on in the Vective too. Fair enough. Mike, for his part, is the Hocker Rocket X for 5K, 10K. No surprises there. No, and then the Meta Speed Sky half and full. He's racing his first marathon in the in the in the, the Meta Speed Sky soon. Interesting because he's always been a barefoot runner. He's his first taste of carbon. He just keeps PBing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for me, I'm going to go. 5k, 10k, I'll probably go Vaporfly, it's fair to say. My 10k PB is in the Metaspeed Sky, I think it's actually just as good at those distances. And then half and full, I'm going Alpha Fly, prefer the kind of extra lock in feel. Certainly have no, certainly think it's a wash of the Vaporfly at half and at full, not far off, but yeah, I'd give it to the Alpha Fly. It's a lot of Nike in the end, so they are, they've been around a long time. They're still, still kind of the kings in our book, it's fair to say. Yeah. That's it guys, that is a whole load of information about Carbon Shoot. If you're still watching at this point, well done. Uh, thank you very much for staying to the end. Uh, please comment below about what you think about all the Carbon Shoes. Like, subscribe. Something else they have to do? I can't remember. Click the little bell. Ring the little you fancy bell. It. Ring the bell. Yeah, <laughs> comment. Uh, and yeah. And check out all the other individual reviews of the Carbon Shoes that we've got on the channel if you want to go deep into any of those shoes. Yeah. Because we've covered most of them. We've got so much depth. We've got, we've got first runs, full reviews, race reviews. There's lots of content out there if you want to know exactly why we like each of these shoes in the ways we like them. And we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.